Can there ever be such a thing as prehistory news? Well, you be the judge. Welcome to our news strand, Prehistory Flash. I'm Michael Bott. And I'm Rupert Soskin. And the clue is in the title, really. Quick light bites bringing you the latest discoveries and developments in the world of prehistoric archaeology. Kicking straight off, we're going to be taking you to the banks of the Danube, about 30 miles west of uh, Vienna. Um, but 30,000 years ago... But before we do that, please do hit the subscribe button to get notifications of when uh, we do these and our other shows. And if you're interested in supporting this channel, please do consider joining our Patreon community for even more content. You get direct access and uh, it helps us to produce the best prehistoric archaeology programs and films we can. I'll put the link up in the corner there for you. All right. Uh, what have we got this uh, this time? Do you know this? This is a it, it's a painful discovery, um, uh, whilst being uh, quite lovely in its way. It's the earliest ever known burial of identical twins, mm, mm. and uh, basically uh, the burial itself is quite lavish. But we'll come to that in a minute. This is, as Michael said, it's in it's in the town of Krems, right in the middle of the town, actually, and this. Burial. It's two babies, obviously identical twins. Uh, one of them died just after childbirth, and mm. they've t they've been able to see this from uh, from bones and teeth, really. But uh, 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 but one died just after uh, birth. The other died weeks to um, short months afterwards, and the the burial is. Uh, they were buried under mammoth, under a mammoth shoulder blade, which has been shaped to form a, a cover for the grave, and the whole thing is coated in red ochre. Uh, so mm. it's you know it's just um, it's painful really when you think that one child died at childbirth and another one died short weeks and months uh, afterwards, and then only a few feet away there is a third child that they've been able to ascertain is very closely related, probably a cousin, and that was uh, some months older. So you've got two yeah. twins dying shortly after birth and another related one in the same family dying some months later. It's just, you know, what a poignant thing to discover. It's highly evocative, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. We should point out that uh, this is coming up in news. Um, uh, the discovery was actually made in 2005. That's that actually, that's a very good point. Yeah. Um, and it's once again, uh, it's another case of modern tech, you know, being able to go back and look at older discoveries and learning that uh, this is the oldest known set of identical twins. It's a fantastic thing to be able to tell. Well, yeah, that's absolutely it. Uh, the application of ADNA uh, techniques mm. uh, and isotopes uh, to be able to evaluate what the actual filial relationship uh, was between these uh, two um, uh, infants. Um, I've got some great detail here from the original, uh, from from the paper, from the uh, study of the D uh, mm. DNA. But first, there was a description of what's actually in the grave. It's really helpful to get a conjure this picture. So I'll I'll just read from the paper. It says the oval-shaped grave pit of the double burial, measuring uh, 0 0.36 by 0 0.28 by 0 0.2 meters contained the skeletal remains of two infants, um, where they'll be referred to as individual one and individual two. Um, I think individual one was the earlier of the burial. Each of the bodies was embedded in red ochre, and they were placed next to each other in flexed positions facing east, but with their skulls pointing north. The bodies, however, did not occupy the same amount of space in the grave pit. While individual two was placed more centrally, individual one was deposited against the grave pit's southwest edge. A total of 43 beads made of mammoth ivory were set on individual one's pelvis, and their arrangement clearly indicate that they've been threaded on a string. All 53 beads are remarkably similar in size and shape, and the perforations show no sign of wear, indicating a production for the sole purposes for the sole purpose of serving as a grave good. 
Personalized attribution is emphasized by the position of the individual's right hand, which was placed atop the string. In contrast, individual one was equipped with three perforated mollusks and a perforated fox incisor that were recovered from beneath individual two's mandible, suggesting that they were pendants on a string necklace. After deposition of the corpses, the pit was not backfilled, but instead sealed with a mammoth's shoulder blade of which, to make it fit, the uh, scapulae had been flaked off with a series of blows. Yeah. So, paints a picture, doesn't it? It really does. It really does. It's, um, yes, it's the, it's the wonderful aspect of ADNA telling us, you know, giving us such rich information. Uh, mm. But at the same time, actually giving you a, a closer glimpse at prehistoric trauma, really. I mean, what a dreadful time mm. for that family. Mm. And you mentioned there is a third infant involved in this study, mm. which was uh, buried uh, some distance away. But again, a very uh, young infant. And there's a familial relationship, the, the, the third uh, one being a cousin. Yeah, yeah. Now, the whole thing ab about this for me that absolutely, well, no, before I go into that, 2005 it was discovered, mm. um, but um, they, uh, there was quite a fuss about it in Austria at the time, I do believe, and uh, they made a reconstruction of the grave for the Natural History Museum in Vienna. Um, so that's there, and I think some of the photographs that I may be showing are of that. Uh, but as we're saying, this recent study is to do with the DNA and the what comes out of it for me is I just gasp when I think about that we're looking back 30,000 years to, you know, a virtually from our point of view, an alien existence. And yet and the bizarre thing is, I find myself getting very emotional about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. It's it's absolutely bizarre um, that these two little tiny tots have been buried with such tenderness mm. and respect that you get such this sense of tragedy. Mm. Just boof from yeah. thirty thousand years ago. It's there. Yeah. Right right in your in your face. Yeah. You know, the the love and care um that has been uh, put into um mm. uh, laying these little ones to rest but, uh, again the, it, it, the, the astonishing amount of information that comes out of the modern tech uh, i find consistently enthralling i mean the fact that they've been able to tell from this that uh, they they did isotope analysis as well so they can tell uh, how they do this i have no idea but they can tell <laughs> from the carbon nitrogen and barium in uh, in the tooth enamel that the twins were breastfed yes and and the uh, the the cousin the the one the the older burial um well oh, the younger burial, the older child, uh, they could see from stress lines in the teeth that he it, it implied that he had feeding difficulties. And from that, they, it makes them wonder if the mother had a painful breast infection, mastitis or something like that. Um, yeah. and, and it's those sorts of things that mm. come from our ability now to do this extreme depth of chemical analysis it's as you say i mean the the just the the dreadfully painful time for that family yeah. uh, is yeah, suddenly yeah. made real all by chemical analysis it's extraordinary yeah. really yeah yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think that's about it. I mean, mm. the other detail to come out of this, you know, is the ubiquity of uh, mammoth. Yes. <laughs> just, you know, I mean, aside from everything else, just think about that moment, mm. you, know, like the, you know, like mammoth bone is the kind of the plastic of the age. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and mammoth ivory. Um, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, not surprising that we don't have any mammoths. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, think about that for a moment. 
you know, the work and industry that must have gone into providing, you know, the meat and the raw materials that a mammoth provides. I mean, these mm. are big mm. beasts. Yeah. This is slight, a slight digression to another aspect of what was going on uh, uh, for these folk at the time. Mm. Um, but that's it. That, that's, uh, that's our first, um, <laughs> that's our first prehistory flash yes. for you. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. loads uh, more to come. Um, and uh, no, we just found that one fascinating. Mm. And we shall be scouring the internet and everything uh, to bring you more interesting little uh, tidbits like that in the future. We certainly so, will. All right. With that, See you it soon. Is, I think goodbye from me, and it's goodbye, goodbye from, from me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you soon, see folks. See you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.